Hi and welcome back. Uh, in this next episode of sharding um, we're going to be taking a look at the creation of the schema and running some transactions against our sharded database. In part one we set up a um, simple shard um, environment to test um, our applications with. So we have a shard director and two shards running the shard databases inside of that environment. So if you haven't seen that, go back to um, part one. Now, having a shard database is only um, part of the solution. What we really need now is to go through and create some tables. And in 12.2, we've extended the syntax of DDL to include the concept of sharded tables. So what we can see here is that we have our sharded table customers, we're using a keyword, and we're specifying the hash approach for um, this table to be stored. And the nice thing is we also understand the concept of child tables, and we'll come uh, in a second just to explain why that's important. But the important point to look at here is the fact that um, there is a relationship um, between our tables for customers and orders. And we declare that relationship by using the keyword reference. So um, our shard table customers refers, has a child orders. Um, the customers table is partitioned by a consistent hash. So it's spread across the various shards in our environment. And then the orders, which refers to those customers, uses the foreign key to actually um, also be hashed in line with that um, customer's table as well. And there's another important um, concept here because not every table we want inside of our environment needs to be hashed. In fact, there is a certain set of tables which we'd want to be available and have the same data on every single last one of our sharded database. And to solve that problem, Oracle supports the concept of a lookup table as well. In this instance, the products table. And when we declare the products table, we're going to ensure that it is replicated amongst all of our shards. Now, what does that look like in practice? So what we can see is that we have um, our tables here, customers, orders, and items that we specified in the previous um, slide, and we have our products table. Now, by declaring the child reference between the customs and the orders table, and th in this particular example, the line items as well, what we ensure is that when we chunk up the data, that the information relating, relating to a particular shard key, so and, um, in this instance, Mary123, um, her orders um, associated from the reference um, that we declared um, and the line items associated with that orders are all placed in the same chunk on the same shard. And this means that when I visit a shard um, and I specify a shard key in this particular instance, Mary on 123, I'm, uh, I have all of the data pertaining to that shard key for customers, orders and line items on that shard. I don't need to do anything else. That's all handled and managed automatically for me. So by declaring the reference that exists between the various sharded tables, Oracle manages the locality of the data for us. And in relation to that, we can also see that the products table below has um, been replicated to all of the shard in our sharded database. So if I go to shard one, I have exactly the same data set on shard one. If I go to shard two, exactly the same data set for products on shard two. And when I go through and update the products uh, table, typically from the coordinator database, I will see that information replicated via distributed materialized views to all of my shards inside of my sharded database. So that's what we're going to be looking at over the next few minutes. Um, we're going to be going through and creating some tables and then running some transactions against those tables we've just created. So now we're going to take a look at the um, environment that we set up in the previous section. So we have our shard director and our two shards. So if we go to the shard director and launch the GDS CTL um, 
uh, tool to enable us to modify the uh, shard. If take a look at the configuration of our cluster. What we can see here is that we have our data centers, our region, sorry, our um, shard director, and our two shards. Now, one thing to note is we haven't defined any services, and clearly we need to define a service to enable us to connect to it and begin um, working against it. So let's do that straight away. Let's go through and create this service um, in the same way that we'd create a service if we were running with um, a, a, a inside of a standard single instance database. So just use the add, um, command add service, um, define its name and the fact that it's the primary service inside our environment, and that's created for us. The next thing we need to do is to start that service. Now, um, that's useful, but what we should do now is see uh, uh, whether that service has been created and started on our various shards. And um, it will come as no surprise to find that it's done automatically for us. So if we take a look here, we can take a look at the listener. What we can see is that the listener has created a service for us, SOE, and on shard two, we should see exactly the same thing as well. So we have a service that is available to us um, both from our shard director and on our shards as well. So that's all well and good. So the next step uh, for us is to go through um, and create um, a schema um, and the tables that go inside of here. And I'm going to use a, a heavily modified um, order entry uh, uh, environment. So the important point to note here is before I run any uh, SQL, I need to an change the session to enable it to do sharded DDL. So if I don't enable it, it will effectively try and it will usually give me an error if I'm using any explicit sharded DDL or um, will just apply to the single instance. So in this particular instance, what we're going to do first is try and create a table space. Now, the table space is um, in a sharded environment. Um, we've simplified their creation by um, adding the concept of a table space set. And um, this table space set um, will use the chunk parameter that we specified in the previous release. So we specified a chunks of 120 in the previous release. Um, and so that's what it's going to try and do, create 120 table spaces. Now what you can see here is that I tried to run this command without enabling sharded DDL and we got an error. So by enabling sharded DDL, we can now go through and start the creation of that um, of those table spaces. Now these table spaces will be created not on the shard director, but on the actual shards themselves. So if you go over to one of these shards now and take a look at it, what we should be able to see, and I've got a little script here called uh, table space, which will just show us the table spaces that are actually um, running. I need to spell it correctly at table space. There we go. Um, and you can see that um, it's using a template um, and it started the process of creating these table spaces uh, inside our environment. Now it's done uh, 24 so far. And if we go through to um, shard two, we we'll, can take a look at the number of table spaces that have been created on this particular um, shard as well. And we can see here that we've got 37. So what's happening is it's building these table spaces in parallel across um, our shards. Now, um, this is going to um, uh, uh, create the sharded table space, but remember there was one other one that we need to create, and that was a non-sharded table space for our um, distributed reference information. In this instance, the products uh, information is what we're going to create. We create that. Now, the difference here is it's not going to have many table spaces just to support the concept of a um, products table, but it has been created again because we specified the auto session enabled DDL. Now that we've actually um, created those table spaces, we can now go through and create the user and set its default table space to be the SOE DS. So any tables that we create will typically be created inside of that um, uh, SOE table set. Um, table space for us. So now we can connect to SOE. Um, and if I go across to any one of the shards, what I should be able to see here as well is that um, I've created the SOE user and it's available on all of the shards as well. And this is uh, the beauty of um, GDSC. I effectively 
can see from there and launch and run all of the DDL. And what we can see here inside of GDS CTL and by running the show DDL is the SQL that's been executed across all of the shards in our environment and it will also give me warnings indicating um, if I fail to run a piece of uh, DDL as well and which shards that failed on if there was a problem for instance. Having created our users our next step is to actually go through and create the tables. So here we're going to see we've got a table customers I'm going to specify its primary key is customer ID and that its table uh, space is going to use the SOE table DS underscore set that we specified previously. And it has a card details table in this particular instance and address and these are using the shard key and they're using because they're children they're referencing that shard key as well so next step for us is to enable shard DDL and then go in and let's just copy all of this DDL um, from our script and we can run it and again um, as as will happen with the as happened with the uh, user when I execute this, this these DDL statements they'll be created on the shard catalog but um, that in turn will actually ensure that they're um, executed on all of the shards in our environment. So we've got all of these tables um, and including some materialized views and they came as a result of um, specifying a lookup a table. So we've got lookups on product information and descriptions as well. Uh, I'll just create those sequences as well. We'll need those uh, as we go through in the future steps. Now we've created all of the DDL to run our transactions against. Let's take a look at the code that will insert data into them. Now I'm using um, Swingbench here um, and uh, a, a, a task inside of that. Now as you'd expect, I'm you obtain the connection pool from my um, environment. Having got hold of that connection pool, the, the, my most important thing to do is to actually build that shard key. And that shard key is based on the UID that I just created above. And this is just a randomly generated string that is, um, is almost guaranteed to be unique across my environment. So having created that shard key, I then obtain a connection from my connection pool specifying that shard key. And the connection pool will return to me a connection which will point to the node that I need to insert this data against. And from then on in, having got hold of that connection, the rest of my SQL, um, the rest of my SQL in this uh, case being executed inside of my Java program is exactly the same. There's no different than it would be if I were running against a single instance, a rack database or a sharded environment. So it's um, identical. So having modified that code, let's start up Swingbench and we can take a look um, at running some of those transactions. So here we're just looking at Swingbench and for those who aren't familiar with it, it's just a load runner. The important point here is the connect string that I'm actually using to connect to my sharded environment. Um, for this particular instance, the host I'm connecting to is the shard director. So I'm connecting to the shard director. I'm specifying um, the, the uh, port that I'm going to connect to, 1522, which is the uh, listener um, process that the shard director has and then I'm connecting to the service that I created earlier on. And um, again, specifying the region that I actually also want to connect to uh, in this particular instance too. If I just test that, I can connect to the database. And what I'm gonna do is just run that customer registration uh, transaction that we were just running, uh, looking at just a second ago. And then all I need to do is to um, execute, and we're gonna run a single user at this particular instance. So if we start the execution, of that transaction, what you can see here is the transaction executes. We're only running one a second with a single user connected to the database at this moment in time, and as you'd expect, the actual transactions of second or one, um, and that enables us um, to see what's actually going on. But the important point here is if we actually go over to each one of the shards now and um, count how many um, uh, transactions being executed against the shard, and so obviously to do that we need to log in as SOE SOE. Now if we select count, um, uh, sorry, if we take a look at the tables first, so you can see that they're all there, so we see our customers table, and if we do a select count from the uh, customers table, there we go, we see we've got 19 
on shard one. And if uh, we connect again to SOE on shard two and do a count of the uh, customers that we've created inside of this schema as well, we've got 37. So each time we go backwards and forwards between this, we'll see a slightly um, differing number. And obviously, as we're adding more and more um, uh, customers to our data sets. Now, that's all great, um, but why don't we go in now and um, start a larger workload running against um, the order so we can better see what's actually going on. So let's um, get rid of the think time between transactions and increase the number of users to 50 threads. So we've got 50 threads going as fast as they can against our um, sharded environment. So all users have logged on and we start running um, our transactions. So we're running about 600, 700 a second. So again, uh, this is um, not an ideal configuration and I'll point out in just a second why um, we could probably get this to go much, much faster than it currently is. So um, again, as you'd expect, the difference is now we're running 500 times more transactions than we were previously. Um, it's worth pointing out, um, I mentioned earlier on connecting to connection pool and inside of Swing Bench, I can go through um, and um, set that up inside of the configuration. If we take a look at connection pool here, I'm saying that I'm using connection pool and by default it will use UCP. Um, one thing to point out here is even though I'm running 50 users, um, I could probably go much faster if I actually had a bigger connection pool because at this point having to share 16 connections between our 50 users and they're going as fast as they can. So there's a, a, a obviously going to be some contention. Okay, um, we've let that run for uh, a little while. Let's go back and uh, count the number of um, uh, customers we've created. Now I'm connected to the um, shard directed, the coordinated database here. We can see that we had uh, over 100,000 um, uh, customers created. And if I do a quick count um, inside of the customers table on each of the shards, um, what I should see is that we get a rough, uh, roughly equal division of customers because we've used a consistent hash between the pair of them. So again, on shard two, yeah, so we've got roughly the same number of customers between various shards having run that particular workload. So let's come out there. There's one thing that's um, worth pointing out. I'll just log in as um, uh, sys here and take a look at the table spaces that I've actually created. And um, uh, what we can see here is that we're actually beginning, all of those um, table spaces are slowly filling up with data inside of them. And so in the next step, what we're gonna do, next episode of this uh, sharding thing, we're gonna take a look at adding shards and seeing how those chunks are now distributed between the additional new shards. So I'll see you in the next episode, part three, where we're gonna go through and add additional nodes.